Good morning, folks. Earth got a little break the last day. Sun calmed back down. Earthquakes gave us a breather. But we've still got space weather to be concerned with, and another large earthquake is expected within 36 hours, assuming the top quake of the last day didn't get the pressure out. Got interesting news and weather as well. Departing sunspot here, letting off some goodbye plasma and 304 angstroms, the red. Coming over to spaceweathernews.com, we find 193 angstroms showing about the same perimeter motion, but calm earth-facing positions. Top left, you see another towering filament. The solar flaring is back down. Indeed, just made that one run into M-class range, and the sunspot responsible is on his way out to the right. Incoming spots to the left are tiny. The solar wind is calming down a bit more now after days of instability caused by coronal hole streams. Hold that thought, coronal holes. As you can see them here, quickly remember yesterday's flare event. Even though the CME itself will miss Earth, it produced a tremendous heliospheric disruption that should couple with Earth today or tomorrow for a big quake. And you can see that the transequatorial extension of the northern polar opening stretching way down into south latitudes will have reached Earth-facing position as that CME hits coupling position. Our disaster prediction app programs are watching and analyzing literally 24-7, and folks, our one shot at avoiding another big one in the next day and a half is if this actually released a lot of pressure. It did ring up well into 6 magnitude range despite the USGS downgrade, and at that location, it is a lot of movement. Looking back at other quakes, Ecuador death toll is over 400. More still trapped, more than 100,000 will need aid. Don't forget Japan is still recovering from twin deadly earthquakes on back-to-back -back days in the southwestern regions. Swarm trying to cut the island in half. Excellent drone footage coming in from the hard-hit areas. Yeah, literally, trying to crack the island in half. Mount Popo also took activity up a notch. We can use all the pressure release we can get before that CME coupling combines with the earth-facing coronal hole. Let's move on to our news articles. Top One Today looks at the high-energy sky and examines the top gamma sources in a new way, also getting some fascinating observations when the particles detected go faster than light through water. Interesting. In Houston, speaking of water, the systems responsible for this are completely lost in the central U.S. with a flat tire and no cell service. They will be stuck right there again tonight. More flooding, more snow to the north, eyes open in Texas. The snow wrapping around the western side did finally make it down to New Mexico yesterday. This is Sandy, a peak with a clear snow line as plain as the eye can see. I really do love it here. Anyway, folks, Billy and I got that solar flare discussion out for you yesterday. There are a ton of new videos over the last week in Deeper Look and Fly on the Wall. We've got weather looks at Europe, Down Under, Cyclone Fantala at Madagascar, followed by current global conditions and shots of our star to close. The solar flare that just missed Earth was 10 to 50 times bigger than the solar events that took out air travel, transformers, and telecom a couple times last year. It's 4.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.